afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Friday, January 21st, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern. I want to remind everybody to keep Patty McPeak and her husband in your prayers uh, so that she has a recovery. She hasn't been doing too well. She's been so sick, so... We want to keep her in the body because she's got a lot to do. Each of us, all of us, are here to feel deeply satisfied. I invite you to get really curious about something today. What if you could feel totally okay and satisfied with yourself, your life, and your future? Totally satisfied. If all of your deepest desires never came true, what if your satisfaction and deep inner contentment was completely independent from the outer world? How would you approach your life differently? All of us are already so amazing. And every one of us deserves fact is to explore what it's like to feel deeply satisfied with ourselves, loving all parts of us. One of the things on this planet that we, we've been so conditioned because we've been so attached to the physical that we don't, you know, we're, we're afraid to let go. Because actually, and this gets confusing for a lot of people, there is no death. There never was. Death is a word made up on this planet. We enter physical form, we experience physical form, then we leave it. We continue. The physical form ends. See what I mean? In the midst of winter, I learned that there was in me an invincible summer. Albert Camus. All of us are like the sun. Eternally bright, warm, and healing. There is nothing in this universe that can put our light out. Nothing. Our brilliance will continue on and on and on for an eternity and beyond. Our inner light is always on. Blazing bright and expanding. We shine without even knowing we are shining. The light of our awareness is continuous. Even when the mind clouds our vision, the sun is always, always, always shining behind it. The light that we are is forever here now. There is always a flame burning within us. Even when we think all is lost, hopeless, and dark, it is there. Even after our bodies wear out and we, are phys we physically leave this amazing vehicle, we will see that the light of our creative lumin, lumin essence goes on and on. Something will continue to experience life, reality, and consciousness. Death is the greatest illusion of them all. Death is the greatest illusion of them all. If you truly want to get the most out of your time and experience, the greatest experiences possible on earth, you must choose to first accept deep in your heart that there is no end to this experience called life. You must know it deep down so it becomes a part of you. When you trust that which never dies is forever inside you, eternally free at the core. We become fearless and unstoppable in all that we do. Everything we do becomes successful and any goal we want to achieve will manifest because we will have no fear. 
our approach will be unfallen, unfailing, because we have nothing to gain or lose. We can finally leap into the unknown with total faith, courage, enthusiasm, and joy. The person who realizes that he or she is not really a person, but a soul that lives in this body, is the only one who can truly be deeply eternal, loving, and free. Everyone else will give love with conditions and be attached to some form of expectation. This is because they are attached to their ego thoughts and body on some level. They think that this form is all that they are and thus are limited by it. The advanced being knows otherwise. The truly liberated soul has realized that they are pure, undifferentiated consciousness that is beyond all thought and all form and is grounded and well-established in the joy and freedom of being absolute, deeply eternal loving. When we accept that there is no death in this lifetime, we begin to see everything with new eyes. The typical stressful situations that we are used to suddenly become exciting, fresh, new adventures. Those people who challenge you on the deepest levels are truly your greatest teachers, of course, and are welcomed into your heart on the most intimate levels. This is how we can know and experience what real peace is like. There is no longer any resistance, judgment, or fear because we realize we are the eternal source of love. All is forgiven, and everyone is your friend. It's truly discovering heaven on earth every single day of our lives. Love does not resist itself because there is no thing outside it to resist, Angela Walker. Recognition of the deathless in you is the fastest way to true freedom. Recognition of the deathless in you is the fastest way to true freedom. It comes instantly from a deeper investigation of your spiritual nature and an honoring of the very essence of your being, an honoring of the very essence of your being. This is what really matters most in this lifetime. The source of who we are is where the ego life ends and the spiritual life begins. The source of who we are is where the ego life ends and the spiritual life begins. You know you cannot bring any of this stuff with you when you die. So why invest so much of your time and energy into it? Do not be attached to anything that you can place a label or name upon. Everything, as we know, one day will fall away from us like old leaves on a maple tree when hit by the autumn breeze. Simply invest all of your time and consciousness, exploring the eternal light and love that you are. It is like we were told as children to be afraid of a snake that is really a piece of rope. Remember, I don't know if you've ever uh, experienced that. You know, and it's kind of dim, and you, you look at it, and it, it does look like a snake, uh, but in the dark. And when lights are, are dim, yet when you turn the light on you, and, and you see the truth, you just begin to laugh and laugh and laugh. When you fully accept that death is not real, then you really start to smile and truly become alive. You stop being afraid of everything in life completely. You also stop procrastinating and start doing everything you always wanted to do. You stop holding back your love, your words of appreciation, and your sacred heart energy, and every meaningful thing you wish to say to those you are most, you care the most about, 
you start to share the gold, which you always felt could not be shared. In truth, in truth, there is nothing to be afraid of. Everything is always on a divine cosmic plan. The projection your mind has created in who and what you think death is or who you are is still a small slice of the truth. The totality of you is beyond what you can imagine. You don't have to be afraid anymore. Are you afraid to look in the mirror? A lot of people are. A lot of people, they'll go about their business and, you know, of course, morning, whatever, but they never look in the mirror. They avoid it as much as they can. You may not like what you see, yet you know that what you see can change. If you're willing to look at yourself differently, this tiny shift in perception is all it takes to step into the deathless experience of life. Open your mind and see what it's like to live the next 24 hours of your life knowing deep in your heart that you will never, ever, ever, ever die. You will find that the mind resists. It will. It will. Our minds resist or try to manipulate and micromanage it. The mind is used to living and being in control. Remember, our minds are used to living and being in control. And to live a life without fear is the purpose of our lives. Yet, if the mind hears there is nothing to worry about, it will truly get worried. The mind is used to its job of being afraid and time-bound in the 3D, this 3D world of polarity thinking. It doesn't know anything about living for an eternity. That seems absurd. There are so many practical things to accomplish, and being absolutely trusting would mean that nothing would get done. Give your mind the option to explore what is behind door number three. Imagine what it may be like to just explore the sensation and knowing that you are an eternal being who will go on and on and on forever. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Nothing to lose and everything to gain. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, the first step that we all practice is to relax these bodies that we're in, head to toe, inside now. Now, we're like super magnetic sponges, and we absorb everything. These bodies take on everything. And a lot, they store a lot of stuff in their subconscious minds. So, from the baby body, right? Everything around you, that body's absorbing. Subconscious is storing it, packing it, storing and packing it, right? All, all the comments, all the communications, all the guidance, all the direction, all the suggestions from parents, loved ones, strangers, everything. And this is all through the time we're in these bodies. All through. Never stops. See, most, of, most people don't know that. So that library that we have, that library in our subconscious mind, it gets really full. This is why we talk about not only the ego mind, but the subconscious mind. House cleaning, dumping things out, you know, getting in things that you would, why, why is this here? I don't, I, I really don't care to have this here. Don't need it. And these are, and these are worries, stresses, fears, anxieties, things that the ego mind dictates to you. 
things that it wants you to worry about. Seriously. The ego mind, once it, when it's in control, and most of us, it is in control to a certain extent, it dictates to how we're supposed to feel, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to do it, on a second-to-second -second basis. Now, add, see, and, and this is why it's so important to relax the body, consciously aware that you're relaxing the body. Because not only that, remember, we're eight, eight billion of us in bodies on this planet, right? And they all generate thoughts. Now, like clouds in the sky, we, we are constantly bombarded with other people's thoughts. And they float by. Now the key is, is for us to look at those thoughts and to say, it's not mine. Nope, not interested in that one. You know? and, and you know, see, you know they're not yours. Yours, 60,000 plus or so, you send out to the universe. Those are your thoughts. Now the trick here is, is the ego mind tries to trick you, that when you embrace one of those thoughts that aren't yours, it, it seems like they are yours. That's the slickness of it. And so you, what, what happens? Well, we, we're convinced that they're ours, so we take them in, we give them energy, we move the energy into form, and we create it into reality since we're supreme reality, and we experience it. How many times have you done... Now, it doesn't mean that you consciously aware of that, but you, have you ever done that or embrace the thought, right? Thinking it was yours. And then perform the thought, you know, actually experience it. But you felt like it it wasn't really on target. It just didn't feel like you or really yours in some ways, right? And I think we've all experienced that more than once. Now, when you relax the body and you're aware of all this, say, and you're wearing out the body, so you relax the body. And we become more in tuned to making sure to be mindful and aware of our thoughts, aware of the thoughts that are coming in that we embrace, and also aware of the thoughts that we send out to the universe. A lot of people will send thoughts out to the universe, and they aren't even, they're not consciously aware that they're doing it. And they're, I, the, the, it's what we don't want. These thoughts go out to the universe, and we say things. We don't want this. We don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. And we get what we don't want because we're the, the universe is looking at that and saying, "Well, they they're sending that out, so I'll send them more of it." This is how a lot of the times we get twisted and confused. because we're just not aware. And to relax the body is when you know you're not the body and you know that you're the master of that body. I mean, you know, we have amnesia, so a lot of us don't know that. So we don't talk to our bodies. We don't communicate with them. We don't have conversations with our bodies. How are we doing today? Hey, body, how are we doing? You know, is there anything you need? Let me know. And to some people, that seems really silly. But that's the ego mind telling you, oh, this is silly. Don't spend your time with us. And when, when you get things and you give them to the body, you say, body, we're going we're gonna to help uh, your immune system do this and do this and do that. And we're going to help you head to toe. Let me know how you feel about it. Because the body has the feeling. But God doesn't feel that way. So we can literally, whenever we choose, put all of our stresses, worries, and fears in that moment, set them up on a couch and say, okay, let's go through you all because you don't need to be here any longer, but I'm going to, to address you to understand why you're here, why you keep showing up. This is part of having no fear. Say, a lot of us will take that and we'll throw it in, in, in that dark closet, say. We'll just throw it in there and only thing do with it. 
But it's there. We all know it. And it surfaces every now and then. So in relaxing these bodies, it's not hard at all. It's not difficult. We do it through our breath. Breath is divine positive energy. There's no mistake in that. We as souls, as gods, as God sources as of heaven, of the kingdom of God, enter these bodies. We power them up. And so the body, you know, has breath, the lungs, Take an oxygen, air, and this sustains the body for us to be able to stay in it. When we leave the body, it stops breathing. Everything shuts down. So it doesn't have its own power source. We give it the power. Right down mitochondria. How does the mitochondria continue to have power? We feed the body the power. Now, sure, we can help can boost this and boost this with certain applications. But the breath is divine positive energy, so we focus on our breath. And by focusing on our breath, we move into the now. We're no longer in tomorrow, and we're no longer in yesterday. We're in the now. And the now is really interesting because everything happens in the now. The past, the future, and the present all are happening in the now. But when we focus on the now with our breath, easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth, we, we aren't stressed. The, the noise chatter isn't there. And the ego mind isn't there because we have stilled them. We have left them alone. And we watch them. We don't judge them, analyze them. We watch them. And by watching them on how they operate, this is how we master them. And you'll get to the point, if you haven't already, you'll, you'll have a thought or a feeling or something, you'll go, that's my, that's ego. And it'll disappear. So you're, you're starting to be able to identify when you have egoic thoughts or motivations. And, you know, people go, well, yeah, but it comes from, it seems to come from my heart. Yeah, it does, because the ego mind dictates to your heart mind, because you don't know that the heart mind is where it is to be, and the heart mind is many times more powerful than the ego mind. But yet the ego mind is the master over the heart mind because this is how we, we believe to be. So breath is magical. And a lot of us take it for granted and some of us don't even breathe sometimes. We forget to breathe. But the body will make sure you breathe. So when we move into the now through our breath, then we're able to look at the body, not judge it, but to know the body, head to toe inside and out. We know these bodies right down to the quantum quark as the gods that we are in them. The, the the challenge is to rediscover that because, like I've said, we have amnesia from understanding that. So when and this is a part of the journey within. So when we discover that, I am the God, I am not the body. Therefore, this body, I can heal. And we flow, there's seven lights from the tailbone to the top of the head. These lights are nothing like the colors we see here on this planet. They're much more vibrant, deep. And 
they're known as chakras on this planet. And the chakra definition of chakra is wheels, so these are wheels of light. Spiritual etherical energy. We are spiritual etherical energy. Omnipotently powerful. So we flow through these. And we know, that literally, we do know this, we just haven't, a lot of us haven't discovered it, that we know every organ, blood vessel, blood flow, everything in these bodies. And when we become consciously aware of that, we will heal them. There's no doubt about it. Some people already do, but it takes them a lot of, a lot of effort to do it because they, they still haven't let go and embraced the God that they are. Sparse a little bit. And consciously aware simply means that we know that we're up and from the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal wealth. That's being consciously aware. Because it, when we consciously aware of that, we know that we're, they, we also know that we're the God in the body. So when the souls enter these bodies, power them up, that's heaven. We are heaven. We, there's no, heaven isn't a place. That's the trap. Heaven is you. All of us, the gods that we are. So we literally are heaven on earth, heaven being the gods that we are, earth being the body. And we walk this planet, and every step we take, we're creating paradise. We literally are creating paradise. Not only that, we're shining our light 24-7, infinity and beyond. The light is the love. This is what we're made of. This is what we're from. This is the highest of the highest high frequency. And we blast that everywhere. Whether you're consciously aware or not of it, we, it, you, it it's automatic. Automatic. All the time we're blasting our light. And it's saturating and flooding everything around us. And we send it out 360 degrees all the time. Imagine how powerful we become when we are consciously aware that we are doing this. Now we may, we may in this lifetime, come to the understanding that when we decide to leave these bodies we will not follow the light we will not follow the light the light is the trap we will not follow it we know we are the light we are the love and that trap has been played for a long time and it's our time is overdue to discover to not follow it. Now we know all of us in this meditation on and off world, we know that we are gods in these bodies. We also know that because of amnesia, we <coughs> get caught, seduced in the body, where we will spend time in the past and the future and very rarely in the now and not even cognizant that we're in the now. We start off all the time. Every morning, we're standing on a golden circle in the center of three paths. We're in the center path. Every morning, 
before we get started, before thought is generated. And the, the, these three paths are all just identical. The only difference is, is how they're worn. The one we stand on in the morning is the now. And we look at that, and it looks almost brand new. It doesn't look like it's been used at all. And we see these the trees, gold shimmering leaves, bark, uh, branches, everything, uh, roots, and they form canopies over these three paths. And the pathway really literally looks like uh, very vibrant, brilliant, emerald green, flaming grass. And a lot of us will go into the past, and it's fun because we reminisce and we go over thoughts and, uh, you know, experience old things that we've experienced in life, in this life, and possibly others. And... But we don't stay there. Uh, we'll visit, we'll open the door, turn on the light, get comfortable, sit in a chair, take a book off the shelf, look at the motion pictures and the things that we have experienced in that one particular time or set several, and even some of the ones that weren't too pleasant. Uh, but then we put everything away, we shut the light off, we shut the door, we leave. But some of us will go into that past. And they end up staying there too long, and I believe that's it's unconscious. And they end up bringing that past into a future that doesn't exist, create that future from that past, and relive that past in that future. And this is why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we, we always end up here. Now, all of us go into the future. The future doesn't exist. We're creating the future in the now. So it's not, it's not a ready-made future is what I'm saying. You don't, you go in the future, it's all ready-made, it's all been built and everything. No. We do that step by step. So we go in that future anyway, and we, we want to know things. We want to know things ahead of time. It's a habit that we're, we've all developed through the tens of thousands of years. So what what's going to happen... Um, you know, when am I going to have my lifelong romantic partner? Uh, when am I going to have enough money to enjoy my life? When am I going to be well enough to enjoy my life? When am I going to get a new job? When am I going to have a better boss? When am I going to get that house? When am I going to get that car? When am I going to get this? When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? And a lot of the times, a lot of people will take external authorities and, and rely on that external authority to tell them when this is all going to take place for them. Or when it's not. And you imagine that we, eventually each of us will discover in our own way that we are at the helm. Ego mind's not at the helm, we are. We're piloting this life. We are pilots, and we fly through this life. We maneuver. We dodge. And a lot of the times we do this because we're not aware that we're creating it every step of the way. It's, it's, it, there's no argument with it. You will feel that to be true through your heart and minds and know it. That's true. We all create our futures. Every step we take, we're creating them. Now, it doesn't mean that we always have the now. Let's just say we don't know a lot of the things that we create because the things, some of the things we create to experience are supposed to be surprises. Keeps things interesting. It's like, have you ever... Have you ever uh, looked at manifesting something, put it out there, forgot about it, right? You just, you know, and you said to yourself, I'm probably never going to happen. And you just forget about it. And then lo and behold, so much time later, and it happens, or it comes into your life. It's always that way. And, and because we let go. When we hold on to things, have you ever experienced this? It never seems to materialize, does it? 
when you focus on something and you're intent on it. And then it's very difficult not to become attached to it or have expectations with it. None of us are exempt. And, you know, that's what happens. We suffer because of that. Now, there are parts of us that are asleep. We know that. I mean, there's parts of us, the gods we are, that are asleep. They don't, they're, they, they're not awake, of obviously, uh, but they're with us all the time because they're part of us. They'll wake in their own time. Then we have other parts of us that are awake, consciously aware. This is all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. The archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes, ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Vedantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, and beneath earth. All of our loved ones who have sent out a body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited, all the off-worlders, the galactics, and the celestials. Now that the, the electric energy beings that w w with us on this planet, and these bodies, and the eyes that we have with these bodies, we we only see a certain spectrum. We don't see uh, the uh, violet, ultraviolet, red, infrared, we don't see those light spectrums. So we don't see the light energy beings who come in shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations. But there is a group that we're interacting with on a daily basis. The fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. Now, you, you can always ask yourself, can I stay in this body if the body doesn't have water? Emphatically, no, we can't. What about air? No. Fire? Earth, wood, all of it. He said, no. We're very dependent, these bodies. Yes, we power them up, and they function. But the plant, this planet gives them other forms of energy, the body, so that they function with the water, the air, the fire. And a lot of us don't really connect with that. It's kind of like taken for granted. It's really important for us to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times, no matter what's going on around us, and also to be in the deepest, the deepest, deepest, purest, the purest, purest, highest of the highest, highest eternal gratitude, no matter what's going on around you. Staying in gratitude. being gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourselves. Now, the off-worlders, the galactics, and the celestials. Again, over a thousand species, civilizations travel through the solar system every day trillions throughout the universes every day. There is one little group that we are familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Feline, the Zeta Reticuli, the Anunnaki, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion. This particular group has been assisting us for a very long time in our evolution 
enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now, the archangels, their civilization have vibrated at a different frequency than we do, so we don't see them like we see each other. The gods in their bodies and the gods in our bodies are one. Now, we do meet with them. We interact with them through lifetimes. You might just have a random conversation. So you're not thinking, oh, this is an angel. You're just having a random conversation. And, you know, after that conversation is done and you're about uh, going about your, your way, it dawns on you. Something comes over through your heart, mind, and you just say to yourself, that, wait a minute, that was an angel. That was not just a regular, you know, human being and, you know, sitting there having a conversation. I just know that was an angel. Then you feel a little bliss. And they come and they go, you know, they, they're, they're, they're in their lives for a few minutes, a few seconds, uh, or longer, and then they're gone. Now, they all have the same message, but they deliver it many, many, many different ways. And the message is, isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies? And it is. Because as gods, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. As gods, we don't laugh, we don't cry. We don't go to the bathroom, we don't take showers. You know, we don't go and have a good meal. We don't laugh, you know, we don't do any of that. We don't see, touch, feel. We're pure energy. So you, you can think about this. These bodies are created so that we, the gods, can figure out who we are, what we are. I kid you not. And these bodies are the only thing that give us that experience, physical form. And all species do the same thing. They inhabit some form so that they can learn about who and what they are. And even the ones that think they know, don't. That's ego. Or these journeys wouldn't be endless. Now, they can surround any one of us at any one time. Tens of thousands, tens of millions. Reason is, is because of their vibrational frequency. They can hold a large number in a small area. And ask them. In a blink of the eye, they'll be there. And you will be in bliss. Now, the ascended masters, they've ascended into physical form, the gods that they are, right? They ascended into physical form. They have mastered physical form. They have ascended out of physical form. They hold pure consciousness, God form. So whenever they choose to enter a body to be, you know, a, uh, a physical form on this planet, they can do that randomly at will. Not an invasion or anything. We have ascended into physical form and we are in the process of mastering physical form we are creating our experiences to perfect our creation now we're all one and, but see, our eyes trick us because we see a, a, a physical uh, uh, one of us went down the way and we, we calculate that as being, through the ego mind, as being separate. 
we could be billions of light years so-called being apart, but we're all one. So we're all gathered, consciously aware, hundreds of millions of us on and off world. In full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance, and we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Continues to grow, intensify, expand. We immediately form a white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya. This light is what? It is the love that is all the gods that we are. It is the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. Deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest. And we flood this planet. And we're flooding at 24-7 infinity and beyond. It's not stop. With this love. There's no escape from it. You can't hide from it. It's saturating everything. All lower dark matter, five matter frequencies, everything, non-stop. So we begin to ascend above the planet. We're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. Now, if you picture it on this planet, there's no comparison. And the best way to describe it is a grand finale fireworks of which we've never come close to. We have, we have them on this planet, but they don't they pale in comparison. And a later light show the same way. And the ballroom globe, a mirror globe, we've seen them, and they slowly turn and they reflect all the light. And if you combine these, you come close to the ocean of glitter. And of course, we're all curious, so we go to the reflective point. And we notice these little tiny microscopic mirrors perfectly etched, and we enter them. And we discover that all of us, all of us gods that have inhabited physical form to experience, are teaching and learning from each other. We're, we're, we're either students and teachers, teachers or students or both. And it's constant. It's just that a lot of us are so distracted with what? Out there physical material world that's what we're distracted with none of us are exempt from it either and so we get so distracted that we pick up amnesia and you can look at a tree now, normally, see, you, you're, you're taught, we're all taught, tree, that's tree, tree's life, right? Dog's life, cat's life, moose, cow, horse, life. No, just like us, the God in that body powers that body. The God is the life, which gives the body life. So that pretty good exchange there, which allows us to learn about who and what we are while in physical form. You could look at anything when you focus on your breath and you just, you, you, you look at something and you go, that's God within that body that's powering that body. Some of us know this, so it's in reverence we're in, when we're in the presence of another God. Understand that. Not the body. Okay? The God's in the body. It's not the body. We've become uh, so misdirected that we think it's the body, so well, I don't like that person. Or, Look at how fat that person is. Or, when we don't understand that it's not the body, it's the God within the body. That's the reverence. That's the divineness in all of us. And I'm not saying it's real easy to look beyond the flesh because we're so accustomed to adjusting to that. 
that we have forgotten that parts of the gods that we are are in all of us. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. Is this a column of light that we created to remind us all that we, the gods inside these bodies, are the power of healing. These bodies. We're met, then we're met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all. The gods that we are in these bodies of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We're then met with the white fire. <coughs> Excuse me. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are protected from head to toe. We always have been. We don't need protection. We are protected. This white fire armor em emanates from the God force, love, light, energy within each and every one of us. It's the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. Nothing can come, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no demon possession or attachment can invade and penetrate it. They stay away because they'll vaporize. They know it, so they just don't mess with it. So we're always protected. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, greed, anger, fear, guilt, dishonesty, manipulation, revenge, envy, hurriedness, you'll lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a, a double column of light. First part of this column that we created to remind ourselves is the purple transmuting flame. We can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to the pure consciousness where they are, no more. Second part of this column of light is the violet ray. We created this column of light to remind ourselves that we can bring in the violet ray. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, Gratitude and peace. We are then met with a golden white, pink light. This is the column of light that we created to remind all of the all of us, the gods that we are in these bodies, that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sunset. The sun rises. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. We are the trees, the forests. We are the soils. We are the sky, the clouds. We are the mountains. So the next time that you do view a sunset or a sunrise, a mountain stream, an ocean front, a snowfall, starry lit night sky, rainbow, That is the God that you are. That is the God that I am. This is not ego, mine. This is from the heart, mine. This is an acknowledgement. And it's very empowering. It's, it's very freeing and releasing. It's, and understand, it's not ego. So you could be, it's tricky because the ego mind can try to, you know, finagle that. 
It's not about look at me. It's about I am that I am. You're the beauty. You're the majesty, the God that you are. You're the divineness. You're the immortality. You're the love, the gratitude, the peace. We continue to ascend above the planet. And some of us step outside our physical form, hover effortlessly above it, if we're carrying physical form. And we do this because it's fun and we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystal and light tower. We created it. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center of the column, we notice this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is this golden white ball of light. It's surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that never seem to end. And all of this has created this super bright white, unlike any white we've ever seen, with, with electrical flashes and, and, and crystals and reflections. And it's just absolutely beautiful. It absorbs in through our heart minds. And it's like a warm embrace that never ends. Now we discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes well-being. Gratitude in these rings. Gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace. Tranquility, benevolence, tremendous prosperity, tremendous abundance. And we discover that all of this is a reflection of the gods that we all truly are in these bodies. Now we designed a column of light that the top is designed so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees infinity and beyond as it's doing right now flooding all of us all life the highest supreme value in the universe with this highest of the highest high deepest of the deepest deepest purest of the purest purest eternal love now we're drops of this golden ocean and we also hold the essence of this golden ocean golden ocean is the drops drops of the golden ocean and the only illusion is separation We see our meditative sphere at set center circle. We all created this sphere almost four years ago. It holds over 1,800 of our meditations in perpetual motion. These meditations continue to intensify, expand, and grow. They're never ending. All of us gathered on and off world every day, seven days a week, nonstop. Complete liberation of this planet. Not, not, not half, not partial, complete, detailed liberation of this planet. All lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies vanish. And this is constant, this transition. And you know it to be true because all you, all you can do is go into your heart mind and you will feel that vibrational frequency. You will know it to be true. And we can, we can tap in to these meditation and to this flooding of deep eternal love on this planet, in it, on it, above it, below it. The essence of eternal life is flowing within each of us now. Look. Where does it come from? If you dive just a bit deeper today, you'll be presented with something extraordinary, an essence that contains an infinity of magical possibilities. That is who we 
truly, really are. I'll join you in the meditation. Return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move slowly, easily. For six minutes sometime today, explore this statement. The truth of who I am is. The truth of who I am is. Just pointing in this direction will spontaneously and magically allow you to awaken your highest level of being. You can easily transcend and ascend past old illusions when you are centered in the truth of who you are. All your unconscious hypnotic doing and thinking patterns will disappear when you are present to this truth. What do you feel like you need to do today to discover more about the truth of who you really are? Knowing who we really are gives us permission to forget who we think we are. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here Saturday, January 21st, actually January 22nd, excuse me, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation calls. <laughs>